It's such a trip closing year two of Opti TV, and lately I've been dwelling on how special the Opti class is. It's not the only way of getting kids into sailing, but it's an inescapable fact that the Opti class is the biggest youth racing class in the world. As well as an annual world championship, the class also has six continental championships attended by a total of more than 850 sailors a year. Many of the top Opti sailors become world-class sailors after they age out. We just went to the Lake Garda Optimus meeting with over a thousand boats. That got me thinking, how did the Opti class get so big and why did it get so big? Because the story is that just like now where the community is so important, community had a lot to do with the foundation of the Opti way back in the 1940s. So join me as we get into the story of the first Optimist. In 1945, the world had just been remade after World War II, Europe and Asia were in shambles and the USA was beginning to move towards a new normal, bringing its soldiers home and they were coming back to start families and enjoy a life without war. In Clearwater, this post-war America was looking to improve the lives of the kids that had lived through the war. So fast forward to 1947 and a major Clifford McKay decided to bring this idea of a low cost derby style dinghy that could be cheaply and easily built and shopped it around to several organizations, eventually landing on the Optimus Club. And the local Optimus Club decided that the best way to do that was to design a simple dinghy that children could sail. Using the Derby model of supporting merchants, learning independence, responsibility, and self-confidence. These were the foundational principles that the Opticlass was founded on, and you're gonna see how that carries over into the rest of the story. If you don't know who, what the Optimus International Group is, it's a volunteer organization dedicated to providing hope and positive vision to youth and enabling youth to succeed and bring out the best in themselves and their communities. These are tenets that have become really important in the Opti class as it was foundational to the experience of youth sailing in these boats. I find it really interesting that one of the core mission values of the Optimus International Group it's to promote peace and international accord amongst all people, to aid and encourage the development of youth, and in the belief that giving one in self-service to others will advance the well-being of humankind, community, and the world. Interesting stuff, right? In the middle of August of 1947, Major Clifford McKay came into the weekly Optimist meeting at the Great Moss Inn in downtown Clearwater and gave a speech on his vision on a low-cost dinghy and would be sponsored by local vendors. They loved the idea and they set Major McKay to task. So Major McKay came to Clark Mills, a local boat builder, to give him the basic framework and have him design a boat that would suit the needs. What he came up with was what later became the International Optimus dinghy, but it had a long way to go to get there. So it was actually here at Clark Mills Old Boat Shop in Dunedin, Florida that the first Optimus was actually built. Soon after he completed the prototype, he brought it down to Clearwater and met up with Major McKay and his son Clifford for the first ever sail on the Optimus, right here in Clearwater. After that, it was off to the races. They took the first group of Optimus after the prototypes were built and tested and brought them here to the Clearwater Yacht Club Basin for the first ever Opti race. That's right, it was here where the first Optimus got together and raced against each other. Although there were nothing like the Optis you sailed today, that tradition of competitive sportsmanship in the Opti class actually started only months after the first boat ever sailed. A small program, community program, began out of the Clearwater Yacht Club and the Clearwater Junior Yacht Club over on Clearwater Beach. It was here on Baymont Street that kids would congregate and go sailing out of the old fish house here in Clearwater Beach. And by 1948, there were 20-something boats located right here that would sail almost every other day. And in 1949, something would happen that would change everything for the burgeoning Opti class here in Florida. The class was not established as a class. It was very local and very, very few clubs knew about it until 1949, where as fate would have it, an eventful fire would take out almost the entire fleet of boats, but that's when everything changed for the better. Because as they say, in disaster is opportunity. 
It helped that Major McKay worked at the local radio station, but soon enough, the word got out and the community banded together to raise over $10,000 for the rebuilding of the fleet. And Clark Mills burned the midnight oil here in Dunedin to build over 49 boats in the summer of 1949. After the fire, newspapers picked up the story, the local sailing community beyond Pinellas County picked up the story, and many people heard of the Optimus for the first time. This was the pivotal event that brought the Optimus into a region-wide boat. So many people got into the boat after that. So many people saw the design and thought they could improve it. For the next few years, people kept tinkering with the Optimus, but nobody came close to the level of building that Clark Mills did back in the summer of 1949. Within the next year, there were already 43 new Optimus in the Clearwater area almost doubling the size of the fleet. The 50 is also proved crucial to the development of the Opti class because in 1954, Danish architect Axel Damgaard Olsen learned about the design when he visited Clearwater while working on a freighter. There's a story associated with the Opti that he took one back to Denmark on a tall ship. There's not exactly evidence of that, but in his own writings, he says that he first saw the designs in 1954. By 1955, the Opti was already racing in Denmark. It would go through some design changes and new iterations until the class arrived into the 1990s and the 2000s when it was standardized into a one design class. The story of the first Optimus laid the foundation for what the tenets of what the Optimus class would become in later years. To anybody who's not familiar with the Optimus, there's a reason why they still remain popular to this day. There's plenty of them, they're relatively affordable, and the sail plan and boat design is safe for kids to learn and race on. It still remains one of the best ways for kids to get into the sport of sailing, even to today in, the, in 2022 on the 75th anniversary of the creation of the Optimus class. I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at the origins of the Opti class. I'd like to thank Robert Wilkes, the writer of the Optimus dinghy, 1947 to 2007, for his help and materials in making this video. My friends and family who helped me put it together and thank you guys for continuing to support the Opti TV project. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.